this morning, and we're turning to the Old Testament book of the prophet Daniel, please. And we're in Daniel chapter 6. The book of the prophet Daniel, please. And we're in chapter 6 this morning. It was Tuesday morning when I was before the Lord, and I was struggling for in finding the text, and our brother Gordon Bell happened to just drop in. And after Gordon had left, I happened to lift my Bible and read chapter 6, and the Lord spoke to me from that, this passage. But verse 1 of Daniel 6 says this, In it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Amen. And we know that the Lord will bless that reading to our hearts this morning. These are dark days, child of God, in which we live. There's no doubt about it. These are dark days in which we live. Days in which that this world has turned its back completely on God. Days in which sin is being promoted rather than punished. Days in which there is no fear of God. Days in which there is very little, if any, conviction concerning sin. There's a little phrase in the book of Judges, and it appears three times. Everyone is doing that which is right in their own eyes. And you know, child of God, so many Christians today confess that these days in which we live present a great problem to live for God. wonder, do you find that this morning as a Christian, that these dark days in which we live, they present to us a great problem to live for God? But you know, child of God, this morning, I don't see these dark days in which we live. I don't see them as a problem to live for God. I see these dark days as a privilege to live for God. You know a diamond this morning. A diamond shines its best. A diamond shows its best when it's placed on top of a black background. In fact, it's when a diamond is placed against a black background or a dark background 
That's when its beauties are really seen. And that's where its brilliance can really be beheld. And you put a diamond down on a bright piece of paper or a bright cloth, there is things that are not seen that can be seen against a black background. Why? Because there is so much of the diamond that blends in with its background. You see, I think today there's a problem amongst God's people. God's people tend to blend in with the back, black background in which we live. Do you know, I remember many years ago, it was November 1982. I hadn't my driving license for too long, and a couple of us were sitting at the Church of Ireland Gates one evening in our cars. And we thought, you know, it was a winter's night, and we thought we would go to Dungannon for a wee run. But here was the game. It was at night, and we were going to drive to Dungannon with no lights. Now, you young people, don't try this at home. And I remember in this, there's no policemen in here, no. And I remember in this evening, we got to the length of Charlie Thompson's crossroad. We got about three miles out the road. And I was in the second car, thankfully. And the next, light, the next thing, we got the red light. Do you remember the red light in those days? The police, they were having a checkpoint. And the only thing we had going for us that we could see the silhouette of the hedges and that kept us on the road. But the unfortunate thing for me was this. If we had been stopped by the traffic branch, that would have been a blessing. If we had been stopped by the chief constable, that would have been great. But the policeman who was stopping that night was my own father. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but I had two cauliflower ears for about a week after. But do you know something, child of God? So many Christians live like that today. Bearing no light in this dark world. Jesus bids us shine, doesn't he? Like a pure, clear light. Like a burning candle burning in the night. In this world of darkness, so we must shine you in your small corner and I in mine. Oh, no, child of God, diamonds sparkle best. Diamonds shine best when they're placed against a dark background. Do you know if there ever was a diamond in the Bible this morning? I want to say this, Daniel was a real diamond, a diamond that shone bright, and a diamond that sparkled well. Ah, but listen, child of God, Daniel didn't shine for himself. Daniel shone for God. It wasn't his own beauty he was bringing out. Daniel shone for God in a very dark and difficult place. God spoke to me on Tuesday, and he brought me down to verse number, number 3, for here's the text. Daniel, chapter 6, verse 3, here's the text. Then this Daniel was preferred above the pre presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. That's the text this morning. 
And I want you to notice, first of all, something about this text. There's the, there's the person of Daniel. Then this Daniel. Do you know, friends, this morning, the first thing this text does, it places this diamond before us. Wondered you ever take a moment and study Daniel. Daniel, when he was a lad, he was only a young lad of 16 when the Babylonians came. The Babylonians were God's judgment against the nation because of their sinning and rebelling against God. I am telling you something now, child of God. God can deal harshly with nations who forsake God. And God sent the Babylonians to Jerusalem. And Daniel was only a lad of 16. He wasn't a fellow of 40. He was only a wee lad of 16 when he was deported from Jerusalem and sent down to Babylon, that pagan, dark, wicked place. But there's something about Daniel this morning that I think is wonderful. As a wee lad, he made a choice that he was going to live for God, no matter about what way the nation lived. He made a choice. He wasn't going to rebel against God. He was going to live for God. And I want to say this this morning to our young people. You make a choice today and you live for God. Don't you bother your head going with the crowd. Make a choice today and live for God. Daniel was deported to a place where, he would, where there would be nothing to remember him of his God. Do you know if there was a text that Daniel could prove today, it would be Lamentations 3 and 27. It is good for a man to bear the yoke on his youth. Remember the text the Lord spoke to us through last Lord's Day morning, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Where the Lord Jesus said to his disciples, Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And you know, child of God and young people this morning, older people this morning, listen, the Lord Jesus was demanding this morning that we surrender our lives to him. And make him Lord completely of our lives. And I want to say this to the young people this morning. Bless you this morning. You surrender your all to the Lord and you give him everything. And you let the Lord have his way in your life. And I'm telling you, you'll live a blessed life, you know. But that's what Daniel did because it'll stand by you when you start off young. And Daniel was there for 70 years, and when we come to chapter 6, he's been here 70 years now. And I'm saying something else this morning, child of God. Daniel stood his ground. Nobody was going to change his mind. Nobody was going to water his convictions. Daniel stood his ground. Do you know we have a fellowship here this morning and we are blessed with so many young people. And they're not just young people. They're young people who have a vision. And they're young people who have a zeal. And they're young people who are out and out for God. You only had to be there on this week to see them at work. You only have to be in here on a, on a Thursday evening to see them in adventures. You only have to be here on a Sunday evening to see them in impact. 
And over in the youth club on a Saturday night when you hear them speaking, and I'm telling you something now, there's churches would give their right arm for our young people. And I want to say this, I'm proud of every one of them. Every one of them. They're a blessing to my heart and they're a blessing to this fellowship. And we should take these young people in our hearts, you know, and pray for them. Because these are young people who, who are doing a mighty work away up into Newry and down Patrick and, and going into Ross Traver and different areas where maybe a pile of us grown-ups wouldn't, wouldn't dare to go to bring the gospel into these darkened areas. Let me tell you what stands beside them this morning. They've started young. And Daniel has a lad this morning. Daniel has a lad this morning. Listen. It stood by him to surrender all when he was young. Listen, young people, when you go to university, when you go to work, and you're away from this fellowship, and you're away in some dark, difficult place perhaps, listen, you stand for God no matter what. And I'll tell you something else about Daniel, not only as a lad, but as a, as a, as a life this morning. Daniel didn't compromise his convictions. I was at a meeting not so very long ago, and I stood against it. And they're trying to pass a vote. A number of us stood against it, very few of us, to pass a vote that they would change words, that they would change words that's taught in the Bible to suit today's society as far as marriage is concerned. I'm telling you, we voted against it. God help today when society is making an impact on God's Word. Well, it's not. There's William John and there was myself and a few others and we voted against it and the rest of them give it the green card. Ah, oh, Daniel wasn't like that. Daniel was a real diamond because he was controlled by conviction. But look at not only the person of Daniel, look at the pleasing of Daniel. Then this Daniel was a preferred above all the princes, the president and the princes. You know, child of God, even this pagan king was attracted to Daniel. Even this pagan king found room in his heart for this young man here. I'm telling you there's a lesson in this. Do you see when you live a life that's pleasing to God and a life lived that honors God, do you know something? You can be an attraction to the godlessness of people. You can I'm telling you, when Daniel was in Babylon, not once did he look round Nebuchadnezzar. He stood his ground and he stood his conviction. And yet Nebuchadnezzar made him a great man in Babylon, and there was no more of an evil, wicked man in Babylon like Nebuchadnezzar. And you think of the three Hebrew princes, and even though they were threatened by a fiery furnace, they weren't going to compromise their conviction and bow to some old image. You know, this is what God is looking and expecting of us today, to stand our ground in these days. And the three boys stood there when the music began to play and they said to themselves, I would rather burn than bow. Old pile of boys, the day the striking of a match would, would scare them, never mind a fairy furnace. That's what makes Christians shine, you know. When you stand for God, and you know, child of God, I have it in my notes, and 
And Elizabeth didn't even know this. That's what made Eric little shine. So much shine. In 1981, they made a movie about him, Chariots of Fire, and it won 77 Academy Awards. He was interviewed and he was asked, do you not realize you're running for the King of England? And Little says, I'm not running for the King of England. I'm running for the King of Kings, and I honor him. When Eric Little died, he died as what, as what Elizabeth said. He died in that Japanese prisoner of war camp. And amidst the suffering, and amidst the torture, and that dark place there, Eric Little continued to live for God, and I'll tell you, he was a diamond. Because the day when Eric Little died, a Japanese soldier asked the question, Mr. Little was a Christian, wasn't he? And you know, when Daniel lived for God, he pleased Darius, you know. Listen, the world out there might want you to live its way. And the world out there, child of God, might want you to accept its way. But the last thing the world expects is for us to do that. The world knows fine rightly that we as God's people should stand in this wicked day for the things and for the truths of God. I want you to notice the pedigree of Daniel in that text. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Listen to this book. Because an excellent spirit was in him. I'm telling you something about, about Daniel this morning. He wasn't just controlled by conviction. He was induced by integrity. You know, at this point, there was nothing, only corruption. Daniel was living in the midst of corruption. Daniel was living in the midst of lies. Daniel was living in the midst of deceit. Daniel was living in a, in a horrible place. And because Daniel lived for God in that dark place, yet here's the pedigree. There was an excellent spirit within him. Let me tell you something now, child of God. A man or a woman's Christian testimony, it has to be backed up with integrity. Integrity. And Daniel's integrity was so unwavering, Darius chose him to look after the great treasuries of Babylon because he knew he could be trusted. Tell me this, child of God, can people look on you and can people look on me and say, there's a boy or there's a woman I can trust? If the unsaved world looks on you and the unsaved world looks on me, tell me this, child of God, can they say, can they say that we have an excellent spirit within us? Tell me this, when it comes to the pound, can they say it? Boys, there's a lot of Christians, and they fail as far as the pound's concerned. Can they say of us, child of God, when it comes to everyday business, an excellent spirit is in him or her? I'm sure Psalm 26 and verse 1 was Darius's constitution and how he lived for God in a dark place. You know what Psalm 26 verse 1 says? Judge me, O Lord, according to mine integrity. Abraham Lincoln, when he was only a young lad, served in a country store, and when he had given change to this man, and the man left to go home after he purchased some goods, Abraham Lincoln suddenly realized he shortchanged the man. 
and as only a young lad, Lincoln closed the door and locked the place and ran to the man's home and gave him the money that he was owed. I think that's an ingredient that can be missing in so many Christians today, the ingredient of integrity. You can have integrity, true integrity, and no Christianity. There's men of integrity, but they're not saved today. But you cannot have true Christianity and no integrity. This Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. I am telling you, he was a diamond, wasn't he? That sparkled well. But I don't want to finish as we look at the text again, because you've got the prosperity of Daniel. Because it says this, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Daniel, a real diamond, wasn't he? How do you and I sparkle as Christians this morning? Not as Baptists, as Christians. Are we sparkling well? Are we shining forth the glory of God with these lives of ours? There's more than being a Christian and carrying a Bible under your arm, sir. There's more to being a Christian than walking about dressed well, dear. I believe Psalm 1, 1 to 3 was the constitution of his life. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Verse 3, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth her, his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Oh, I'm glad Elizabeth done that children's talk this morning. Because the whole thrust of this message is this this morning. God says, them that honor me, I'll honor you. Know. My goodness, when Joseph was in pagan Egypt, it says in Genesis 39 and 3, And the Lord made all that he did prosper in his heart. Oh, child of God, Daniel, a real diamond, you know. There he was in pagan, dark Babylon, shining for God for over 70 years. A life well lived, you know. A life that shone well. And Daniel didn't see Babylon as a problem. He saw it as a privilege. In your workplace, dear. In your family, sir. You choose well. And you young people. In university or wherever you'll find yourself. You live for God. And I'm telling you now on the authority of God's Word, God will cause you to prosper. That you'll never prosper anywhere else. And may it be our prayer this morning. 
filled with thy Spirit. That's what's needed. Till all shall see Christ only, always living in me. Daniel, a real demon. May we shame in this world for God. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning, and may it find a resting place in every woman. Start losing him six hundred.